Hello everybody, this is Christine Bertram coming to you from the Cards by Christine studio here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. And I have an Alpine Adventure Manly Man Lumberjack card here for you today. There is just something about this card that screams manly. I think it's the plaid coupled with the, the logs here. Um, so we did this card in uh, my club class uh, this past week. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to just show you a little bit about what you're going to be using to make this card. There's the Alpine Adventure stamp set. We pull in the inside part is some skis, the saying, and some foliage. They're like flowers. And we're also using the wreath stamp here. It's a two-step stamp. With this is a bundle set. There comes, I don't know how many dies are in here. There are, let's see, a bunch, 12 of them. What's cool is the snowshoe gets cut out. There's a sled. There's a toboggan. The wreath has a cutout and this eeny teeny little bow, which I lost momentarily for 15 minutes, but I just found. So, yes, so that's the Alpine Adventures bundle. We're also going to be using the Buffalo Check plaid, and then we're also pulling in the Itty Bitty Greetings. I love this set. If you ever want to add a little sentiment to the outside of your card, this set has 32 stamps for you to choose from. Okay, so let's get started. The colors we're using are Mossy Meadow, which is the card base, uh, eight and a half by five and a half, coupled with Cherry Cobbler. Great fall Christmas colors. I just pulled in my bone folder to help give me a nice crisp, even edge here. So we've got that folded and ready for us. We're gonna pull in the Buffalo Check stamp. So I just used this because I worked on a video, but I ran out of time, so I just start over and I never even cleaned it. So. Um, we get a dirty stamp, but that's okay. This buffalo check comes in either clear mount or wood block. The clear mount, if you choose to put your sticker on, you can. I chose not to put my sticker. I find that if you put the sticker on, it sometimes warps your stamp or it makes it pull, depending on how tightly you put that stamp, um, the sticker on. So I like to save the $5, get a clear stamp, and just use my surface here as my, my flat part of it. So with this buffalo check, we're doing cherry cobbler and the ink that we're using is espresso early espresso and when you ink this up you want to watch it because if you're inking it up and it's blotchy like that that's exactly how it's going to stamp so you want to make sure that when you ink this up that you ink the entire thing evenly and that you try to avoid any lines so sometimes depending on how hard you press on the edges you might get little lines and that might be seen or it might not be seen. There's a lot of stuff that's going over the top. So I'm not going to worry about it right now. So our cherry cobbler piece here is five inches by three and three quarters. And when I put this on here, I want to be careful not to put it like this because then I'm going to have, um, you'll see what I mean when I'm done. But what I want to do is try to center it. Um, so I've got equal amounts of these squares on each side. And so I'm going to go something like that. You can see I've got the same amount of edge on this side as that side, that side. Now, I might have not done so good on the top. I could have probably moved it up a hair, but we're going with it. So grab a piece of scratch paper, put that over the top, and you're going to use your fingers and hand to put pressure over the entire stamped image here. And what's happening now is the ink is transferring from our stamp onto our paper. So if you don't press evenly, and put good pressure over the whole thing, you might have some splotchy areas. So you wanna make sure you ink it good, and then you press good. Okay, so that's done. When you're ready to pull this up, just be very gentle with it. Pull it up and get it up, and then move this out of the way right away. To clean this, what I would do is take back that scratch paper and try to get off the excess ink that's on here, and then take this to put into your stamp and scrub, or just use a wet wipe on it and clean it off good. You might end up getting some brown fingers if you do the wet wipe. So, all right, hang on, guys. I gotta go get some linen thread. Okay, I'm back. Nobody ever told me that making these videos would be so so difficult. <laughs> but I think that the more you do it, the easier it gets. So, I had to go run and grab a piece of linen thread. This is 18 inches long, and what I'm going to do is so. Do you see here? I have like a little edge up here, but I don't have an edge here. What I'm going to do is leave that at the top of the card and leave that at the bottom. So when I use my linen thread here, I'm going to leave my t enough tail to be able to tie. This gets wrapped around here twice, 
And when I bring it back, then I'm going to cross it at about an inch away here. So I'm just going to make sure that's kind of lined up where I want it. One tail goes under, and then if you can hold it with one finger, so I always hold it like that, and then you're going to cross over with this to make your knot. Okay, perfect. All right, so you want to make sure you tie that linen thread on before you go ahead and adhere this to the card base. So to adhere to the card base, I like to use the liquid glue. I'm going to put a line at the top and then around the whole edge and pull in your card base. And this just gets centered on the front of your card, just like so. And I think we have about a quarter of an inch all the way around. All right. So there's that so far. Make sure you press at the top here to make sure that that gets a good seal so that your ribbon doesn't come off. All right, so as long as I'm here, I'm gonna grab my ribbon scissors and trim my tails so that they're about the same distance or length. Okay, then I'm gonna set that off to the side. Oh, actually, no, I'm not. I'm gonna pull in my designer series paper. This is from the Wood Textures Designer Series um, six by six paper stack. I think you get about 12 different designs, all wood, um, wood around the idea of different wood textures. This is a two inches by four inch piece of paper. I did it that way because with a six by six, you have two inches, two inches, and two, and then you have one that can go across the top like that. So you would actually get four pieces out of that one six by six inch piece of paper. If you would make this two and an eighth or two and a quarter, wide you wouldn't get that many you'd actually probably only get two out of there but by doing it in the two by four you'll get four pieces which is awesome okay so just a little bit of liquid glue on the back side of that now when i'm looking at this i want that one to be covered up behind the circle so that's why i flip that around designer series paper sometimes has a, a proper direction when you have flowers you want to make sure your flowers are facing up um, I did that like you saw my hand really big didn't you so yeah with this one though I just wanted that one to be around my white piece so what do we have going on next so we have a circle here and I have a piece of white paper that is three and a quarter by three and a quarter that we're going to use to cut out our stitched circle we have a piece of early espresso which is three and a half by one and three quarters. That is for our uh, sled here. I have a piece of red cherry cobbler scrap here. So I'm just going to cut off a little snibble of that so that he's ready. And then we have a wreath that we need to stamp yet. And we have the tis the season we need to stamp. We have an inside that we need to stamp. And I've already got this little guy cut out. So let's do some stamping. We haven't done any of that yet. So what we'll do first, I'm going to pull in my piercing mat. Let's get that out of the way. We'll set this here. And we'll put this on our pile of stuff to cut out. Okay. So we're going to stamp a wreath. What's nice about this wreath is if you look at this, there's an arrow here, there's an arrow here, and there's an arrow here. So as long as you keep all your arrows facing in the same direction, you should be able to cut this out pretty easily. So our arrows on the bottom there, I've got my Mossy Meadow ink, foam pads equal do not squish so hard, just lightly tap on them, you will get plenty of ink, I promise. Okay, so there's our Mossy Meadow, again, keep that in the right direction. Okay, then we're going to pull in the Cherry Cobbler to do the little berries on our wreath. So as long as you kept this arrow facing down, what you'll be able to do is fit them in there just like that. Oh, very good. Okay, so we've got berries and we've got wreath going on. This should line up perfectly on here like such. Perfect. Okay, so that's ready to go. Why don't we, as long as we get our red ink open, we get our green going here, let's stamp our inside. <laughs> this inside is adorable. I love it. The skis are amazing. So we'll keep our red open because we're going to stamp to let it snow. So this color is Sahara Sand. And what we're going to do is make two skis or snowshoes crossing. So we're going to put one right about there. And then we'll make one crossing this way. Nice. I love them. Okay, so that's the first step. Oh, 
before I forget and shut up that ink, I might be across the board here, but I'm a firm believer if you got the ink open, why don't you use it? So let's go ahead and we're going to decorate our envelope with some skis as well. There we go. Okay, so now let's go ahead and shut that up. Okay, so we're done with our ski. Let's pull in our mossy meadow and we're going to go ahead and do this green flowery thing, whatever it is straight wreath thing. We'll put some on the bottom here of our envelope. So that flower I lined up to be right in the in the middle of where the skis cross. So our envelope's done. So let's pull in our inside mat. Now this one I have crossing at the second one, which I'll do there. Just try to get it maybe straight across there. And then this other one is off kilter a little bit. We'll put it like right about here. Perfect. Okay. So now we're done with the green ink. We're still working on the red ink. We need to stamp the Let It Snow, which is part of that set. And that's going to get tucked right in by our skis and above the green. Perfect. Just like that. All right. Oh, you know what? We still have one more thing left with red ink. And that is to make our saying here. So... I've got Tis the Season, but if you're at home and you have itty bitty greetings, you can fit anything, any put it like congratulations would work, even sending prayers would work, celebrate would work, sent with love would work, I'm here for you would work. Uh, let's see, a little hello, I miss you, many thanks, lots of choices here, happy birthday, happy day. So those would all work. What's important is you find one that would fit with the classic label punch. So that's what we're going to be using to punch that out. So. I've got Tis the Season here, so now I moved my piercing mat away because with the clear mount rubber, there's foam on there, so that is plenty of squish if you would use, oop, so I'm going to try to stamp the other side just to see if I can get a little bit even more even pressure on here, so let's do that, okay, that looks better to me, so you're wondering why I stamped it so far off to the side, that's because we're going to be punching it out and I wanted a little bit of grip to hang on to here, so as long as I can get that centered in here, I'm good. So let's see what we got going on right about there looks good. Okay, so I've already punched out a piece of mossy meadow. And if you're wondering how you do that split, what you do is you take your scissors and you're going to cut this right down the middle. Now you could do this split going this way or this way. Just depends on where you want the extra color. I wanted the extra green to be coming out the top and the bottom. Now with this, you've got to be a little bit more careful with gluing because there's a little, little, little bit of distance here and then all of a sudden you hit your finger. So I just am going to put a little glue like that and grab your Tis the Season and you're just going to have a hair of green showing here. If you get glue over the edge like that, it's not a problem. They make something called an adhesive remover, which I own, and I have one right here. Stampin' Up! used to carry them in their catalog. Um, they don't any longer, but you can find them. I'll be using it in a little bit just to get that off of there. But you got to be careful with that green glue because it's very, very, very sticky. It keeps everything put together really nicely, but it's really tacky too. So when it dries, it dries very sticky. Sticky. So when you're working at your work surface, like I'm not putting it down flat on there because it will get glue all over the place. So what I'm going to do is get this glued on here just like so and I'm going to let it sit off to the side there and we'll come back with my adhesive remover and take care of that. Okay, so our inside piece is done here. So I'm going to go ahead and put some liquid glue just around the edges here to get that. Oh, I completely missed that. My aim was bad. Okay, if you're wondering what I got going on here, I got a cottage cheese cup. And I ate a bunch of cottage cheeses, so I have little containers to hold all my little utensils in. Anything to make life a little simpler, right? All right, so let's put this in the inside. Now that gives us an eighth of an inch margin all the way around the edges. All right, so we'll press that in. All right, so that's good. Got that. <laughs> you're going to laugh because... I glued that inside that one instead of this one, but that's okay. I just glued it into my sample, <laughs> so no problema. All right, let's do some die cutting. I'm going to bring in the Big Shot, and we have here some
some scraps from the last time we made this this card okay so we have our wreath here and I'm gonna put the wreath going like that I'm sorry that's not the wreath that's the sled I said that the last time too that's the sled here's our wreath so let's put him there I am using the magnetic platform so that's gonna help that stay in place we'll put our little bowl here and we're gonna put the stitch circle there now the wreath the, um, the sled has a little bit more delicate or detailed defined uh, area here so what I'm gonna do is go back for a round trip so round trip means forward and backward all right so let's get this out of the way okay so the this circle will pop out really nice so that's ready for us to use our bow look at that that just popped out and left our paper right there which is great so we got that here our wreath too look at how easy these fall out I love it when you don't have to struggle okay let's see what happens here oh my gosh super cool so everything kind of just came right out now that's what happens is that sticks onto your plates like that just pick them off put everything in the garbage and let's get this out of the way all right so now with this if you need to they have something called a piercing tool you can use that to poke those there are all these little holes here you're more than welcome to poke them all out if you want I don't know if you have the time and you want to you can do it it's not so bad because the way that this cut they kind of like fall right out if you don't want to go through the work of popping them all just leave them I don't think anybody would ever notice it so all right so we've got our sled done I'm finally calling it the right thing and we're gonna go back to our card and so what we do is this circle is popped up with dimensionals I love the mini dimensionals because then I don't have to cut them in half I'm a very conservative paper and adhesive user so I would generally cut the regular dimensionals in half this way I don't have to do it when I'm layering this down I do have it coming over the green just a hair and I have like the same distance between the top and the bottom on the wood part of it so there's that okay so when you have your dimensionals that you get from Stampin' Up there's a side on here that doesn't have anything um, it's, it's like it's solid that's perfect for the sled you're gonna take and trim off a row and cut this into thirds and what you're gonna do is flip your toboggan sled not wreath over and you're gonna put this on the little frame part here so this can go there and let's see this last one can go right here perfect okay then once you got that on go ahead and pick the backing off and throw it wherever you want throw it later this is kind of going to be at a little slant here and good just like that now our little bow so this is paper it's not real like ribbon so in this case I would put a little dot of glue right in the middle here I would never use liquid glue on real ribbon but because this is paper that just find a good spot to stick it on and voila now this I've got flat on here so what I'm gonna do is put a little dot of glue right up there in the middle and then I'm going to put a glue dot or um, a dot of glue right on the bottom and attach that right about like that. Nice. Going back to this piece, I did get a little bit of stick. So I have my old tried and true <laughs> adhesive remover, and I'm going to pull in just a piece of paper to put underneath this. So I do have a little bit of glue up at the top, so I'm just going to use this. And work this back and forth and that will help me get off any stick that's on there all right just like that okay so if you need help finding an adhesive remover just let me know you can email me at chris m bertram at msn.com that's c-h-r-i-s-m b as in boy e-r-t-r-a-m at msn.com i have a couple here at my house that i could ship to you or if you're local i would definitely suggest stopping by at a class or let me know and I'll have it ready for you when you're in the area so they're only like three bucks so 
definitely worth having in your toolkit. So what I did on this banner piece or this label piece is I put a dimensional on the right side and I put liquid glue on the left side. And I did that because this circle's already popped up. So by popping it up on the right side, that makes it flush with the left side. And so I'm actually going to move it that way just a hair so it's kind of over there. And then I'm going to press down here where the liquid glue is. All right, look at that. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so this is our Alpine Adventure Manly Man Lumberjack Burly Guy in the Woods card. <laughs> so do you have a guy that would love this card in your life? Um, if so, this was this would be a great one to make. If you have any questions about what you made, don't hesitate to email me. Uh, you can find this card on my blog with all the instructions as well as the measurements for all the paper and all the supplies. And you can shop my online store if you're looking for anything to make this card. So I really enjoyed making this with you. I hope that you have fun with this stamp set. This Alpine Adventure is just it's just awesome. And this Buffalo check is just great too. I have sold like at least five to ten of these. I'm not quite sure how many, but people are loving this Buffalo check. I just had my class the other night and three of these sold. So it's a great set to have. Put it in your arsenal so that when you need something fun to make, you got this. These die cuts are just fabulous. So anyways, I hope that's that's all I have. I hope that's um, what you're looking for in this card and that you had fun listening and watching me. Thanks so much. Bye.